The Doghouse Cup Series is proud to be sponsored by Shoney's. Shoney's is today's all-American kitchen. Open daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Shoney's guests can count on quality, delicious food along with warm, friendly service. Stop by one of our West Virginia locations to try their freshly prepared legendary breakfast bar and don't forget to take home a whole strawberry pie. Shoney's, delicious food and friendly service since 1947. Welcome everyone to the Doghouse Racing League. Qualifying will be underway here shortly as practice is wrapping up. Faster out, fastest out on the track, Tyler Molette, Jonathan Jennings, and Kevin Powell really out there. One, two, three. And I have all nothing but Chevrolets in the top five. Uh, that being followed by Daniel Wilkerson and Justin McMahon. Do want to give a shout out there to Shoney's. Appreciate them uh, sponsoring the league here. But it is the season finale. So, of course, we are always looking for sponsors. Uh, if Shoney's can sign back on, that would be fantastic as well. I do want to mention out there, guys, the Doghouse Racing League has their own website. Guys, check them out at doghouseracingleague.com. They actually have uh, shirts, caps, tumblers, and more. You can uh, get that uh ordered up if you're interested in getting that going on but some of these drivers here tonight have learned a lot they've learned a lot about the track they've learned a lot about each other they learned a lot about the cars uh here this season and really we've seen a lot of drivers morph into different shapes this season uh you know jonathan jennings really came out firing out of the gate early in the season hunter simpson followed after that and then jonathan jennings actually kind of dropped off there a good little bit you know, fell back, had, you know, had some problems getting back. But now he is back in the winner's circle, you know, week after week yet again. And it just seems to be he's now back in stride after that huge update that actually changed these next-gen cars. And that is going to be wild here. But qualifying is underway. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got locked and loaded here at Texas Motor Speedway. 100 laps, three sets of tires down the pit. Fourth set will be on the car. Now watch out for that 60% fuel limit. As definitely going to mean these guys are, may have a one-stop uh, pop here tonight, if not two. So maybe around that 40, lap 35, 40 mark, and then around uh, 70 or the 80 mark again, uh, depending on uh, assuming there's no cautions. Of course, uh, cautions, if there is one, there will be no fast repairs. So these guys better be on their best A game here tonight and, and be able to go out there and not get absolutely destroyed. Patrick Morrison here with you with Simtrax Broadcasting here in the booth. And also check out at the bottom uh, where, where the website is for doghouseracingleague.com is where you can find all the merch. All the merch. I think that's the first time I've ever said that. 70 degrees out there on the track, so this should be fantastic for some of these drivers. I know Christopher Berger looking to kind of resume uh, some of his good placing he's been doing recently in the past couple of weeks in multiple leagues here. Christopher Berger uh, right now has been kind of been kind of silent out there, but he's getting his, his, uh, getting his opportunities and his chances. Turn 1 Racing could really use uh, a better turnout here tonight. I know it's definitely some... Uh, uh, trouble for them. Jonathan Jennings, no, no surprises, sitting right now on the pole, uh, and it's looking pretty, uh, pretty good for him as he's right now fastest time. There we go, Tyler Molette right in front of him. Now Texas is going to be a little weird here, is this is the newer Texas? Well, we used to race in more of the older tracks. They've actually taken the turns and taken out about four degrees of banking right in the center. And everybody says that's kind of plateaus on them and fries that right front tire off and really giving these guys a whole lot of trouble trying to figure out how to hook and, and stay fast out on the track. But for how long can they stay fast? That's going to be the big key here is kind of how they're going to be able to wedge back and forth on this time, on you know, on, on the amount of time that we're going to see out here. We've seen in multiple leagues I've broadcast before that – 
uh, you know, Texas, uh, these guys will be awesome for the first 18 laps, then tire fall off. These guys will either be slick, it'll be the the exit of turn two, and guys are smacking the wall. I mean, there's, there's going to be all sorts of places and trouble out on the track, but it's going to be who can actually outlast each other on this one. I expect to see Jonathan Jennings at least the top five here tonight, but he's going to have a pretty good amount of guys, especially Justin McMahon getting up there in that second position being that fifth Chevy to join the top five here right now. And I'm interested in taking a look at Gary Clune, 11th position for him. We're still trying to see if Mike Leftwich in the number 60 Chevrolet can squeak up into the maybe a top 10 start. Bobby Goodwin is out there and uh, two more drivers have not qualified yet. Jackson Lomax and Gary Madu uh, still waiting on those guys to get their, uh, get their cars out onto the track. Right now, Mike Leftwich sitting 16th and that's gonna do it for him. No faster for him. Bobby Goodwin in the number 28. Trying to see how well he can get around here at Texas. I know they say out there everything is bigger in Texas, so we'll give it here just a quick little peek at our championship points here for the night. Oh, no. <laughs> it looks like we're already seeing some spinning out there. Bobby Goodwin, so that's going to do it for his final lap. Uh, I think this is all but over. Jonathan Jennings has the uh, top spot for Elite Southern Motorsports at 2149 in the points. That is huge uh, to be out by, um, seeing that most of these guys are just not going to be able to make up over 100-some-odd points for the race. But fantastic job by the rest of our top 20 here. Uh, being able to really squeak through and, and make it. I would have loved to see Andrew St. Coeur come out here and... Uh, and really be able to get you know put on more of a show that we saw more in the middle of the season uh, because once he was showing up and he started getting timed out on the track he was the one that was out here punishing everyone I mean punishing everyone and really uh, uh, Kevin Thompson was as well but fortunately unfortunately these guys have been out for a few weeks and I believe they're going to be out tonight as well so uh, hopefully starting next season uh, definitely think they are still on the drawing board for the next season schedule that's going to really kind of switch back and forth where these guys are going to end up, but that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, regardless of what I say, this league can go wherever because they race fantastic. You know, it's not a caution fest. It's not back-to-back -back cautions. It's not over and over and over again. You know, these guys really put the pedal to the metal. They put their money where their mouth is, and they are able to race exactly the way they want to race and in the exact right spot. So let's take a look at our starting grid here tonight for our season finale. Tyler Molette and Justin McMahon will be starting in row number one. Jonathan Jennings, our points leader, and sitting second, his brother Kevin Powell will be on the outside starting row number two. Daniel Wilkerson will be in the fifth spot with Chris Lefwich sitting sixth. Matthew Powell, seventh, and on the outside of row number four. Dylan Goodwin in the number 51. So we'll see how that Chevrolet charges back forward. But try speaking of charging forward, there's Jacob Reeves. And the McConey setup shop Chevrolet, number three, will be in the ninth position next to Christopher Simon. Gary Clune, they're out there. Awesome job for Twisted Axle Racing. Got another one driver out there in the number 11 with Mike Samia, no driver to Shoney's Racing, sitting 12th, rotating on back. To our row seven now, Nick Shell and Christopher Berger back here in the back, but don't count out Berger. We've seen him start in the back multiple times here, and he's going to be able to battle his way back to the front. Bobby Goodwin will be starting 15th with Mike Leftwich to the outside in the 60. We saw he had a little bit slower lap there on the, on the second lap, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Chris Schaefer, 23rd. Uh, sitting 17th in that number 23 for Inferno Motorsports, uh, representing Turn 1 Racing tonight. Michael Dow will be sitting 18th. Gary Madu will be uh, in the 19th position. And rounding out the final of our field will be Jackson Lomax in the 96 Chevrolet. Definitely excited to see where these guys end up here tonight. This, this is going to be a blast for the season finale. Already out there in the chat. I don't have BMAC, but I've got the man, the myth, the legend, Andrew St. Coeur. Sorry for missing again, but him and Kevin have planned to go back to Kansas uh, for a few weeks. So, yeah, we're gonna, they're going to try their best out here, Andrew. It's going to be uh, a lot of guys trying, uh, trying to figure out how to win it here. I would probably say Jonathan Jennings has it locked up, uh, even if he comes dead last here tonight. But it's still worth the run, uh, these guys being able to kind of put the pedal to the metal, get in the right position that they want to be, and just do their job. You know, come out here, race, have fun. 
and learn a lot because Texas is not an easy track. I call it more of a supersized Charlotte almost as that tunnel turn out of four will come up and bite these guys. But how flat this turn gets right in the middle between one and two, a lot of guys have been doing nothing but trying to set this car up to figure out how to be faster through that section one and that it being turn number one and turn number two. So how they exit two is going to determine the race. And uh, right now, Tyler Molette showed everybody he's the one to do it uh, because of how he qualified. So let's get ready because Varney in the booth got the green flag out. We're ready to go. Here we go. Ready? Green flag out, and this is the final original start. We're already spinning here in the back. Matthew Powell. Yellow flag is out already. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that one right. It looked like he dumped the clutch, sidestepped it there, and ended up sideways. If I'm not mistaken, I thought Matthew Powell was up in the seventh position. Now he's going to be 19th after an immediate caution. I think Justin McMahon has had some trouble out there, maybe a, a disconnect issue. He's now going to be starting. And I've never seen a lucky dog get the wave around on the first lap, but that is going to be a new one for me. Let's take a look and see what happened to Matthew Powell here. Oh, he was on the edge of the grass. Why was he on the edge of the grass? Normally you can get away with this once you're over that, you know, 150 mile an hour mark here, but he tries to take off of the left sides in the grass. But really, hats off to every driver. Look at him all kind of just avoiding here. You know, yeah, he spun out and everybody just get back, get back to work. Wow. Guarantee that's not what anybody expected out there. So we are under caution here in the front. Mind you, a little bit of Atlanta here. Definitely a little fumble there on the start. This is going to go ahead and extend their pit windows. And you wouldn't think that pit windows would be so crucial when it gets to tracks like this. But they are. You know, they set back. They look back and forth. They kind of take a peek. At, at different angles of where they're going to take this race. You know, if this was now a, a, a two-stop race, this is now possibly a one. You know, they may not have be able to stretch that fuel an extra four laps. So now these guys are going to have to dial it back a little bit, do the recalculations back there in in pit, and we're going to see how multiple, uh, multiple different angles these guys could go. But Tyler Millette, Kevin Powell, Chris Leftwich, and Jonathan Jennings still here in the top four. Uh, Dylan Goodwin, Daniel Wilkerson setting five and six, but we'll see how they line back up when they get double filed. Once again, guys, check out the Doghouse Racing League, their brand new website out there. You can get all their fresh merch out there, hats, T-shirts, uh, and you can even get their tumblers. So that is going to be pretty wild out there to kind of see how uh, uh, if you're looking to get a little bit of that. I want I want to see a picture of one. That would be great. I would love to see a uh, definitely a T-shirt with a giant claw coming through. That'd be pretty. That'd be pretty metal. All right, taking a look at it here. Right now, pace car lights are still on. Next time by, they will be out. Jonathan Jennings uh, still with the points lead here, over 100 points high uh, over top of Kevin Powell. He's going to be in the chase, but not looking so good. Also, I want to give a shout-out there to our uh, sponsors of last week's race. Uh, for Group 6 Interactive. Appreciate them signing on board. I know they are looking to sign up with a couple of the truck races as well here with the Doghouse Racing League. If you guys are, don't know, go ahead and check out the Group 6 uh, Group six Interactive out there and uh, get signed up for them. But this is the Loud Pedal Racing 150 here tonight, and I'm excited to see uh, Jonathan Jennings kind of, kind of bounce this one. I think he's going to have the car to beat here. Tyler Molette may have run some hot laps during qualifying but Jonathan Jennings I think long run speed I think it's gonna be him and Kevin Powell going at it again I just want to know what happened to Justin McMahon why he ended up a lap down on this one some guys did decide to come down and pit I would say uh, Nick Shell came down Christopher Berger came down Jackson Lomax and Chris Schaefer so the entire turn one racing team has come down topped off on fuel and gone back out there I don't know if uh, Christopher Schaefer had a problem He's about 45 seconds down pit while everybody else was down five. So I don't know if that 23 machine had some problems out there. We're going to try to see if I can get uh, Christopher Schaefer into the booth here and see what in the world happened with him. Uh, let me see if I can grab him. Christopher Schaefer, you got a copy? 
Got a copy. All right, man, dude. I, I, I've got to ask. Turn one racing did come down, and it looks like all you guys topped off. Not a bad call. My question is, what are you doing down pit for 45 seconds? Uh, I downshifted one too many times, and I it stung me at the inside wall. I had some repairing I had to do. Dude. Dude. Dude, we're not even a lap five. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's, it's just been <laughs> All it's right, one of those man. weeks for me, man. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's going to be tough. I would want to mention a little bit about your upcoming week here. Uh, I believe uh, with the Thunder Racing League that you race in, uh, season finale is coming up this Sunday. It is. It is. Season finale this Sunday. Ah. And then next season, I think it's going to be a little bit different of how they handle things and what, how you can get into the league. Yeah. Um, they'll be able to find that out going to the Facebook page of the Thunder Race and League. Christopher Schaefer, hopefully we'll see you out there in the big block modifieds and the 360s this weekend. I've kind of missed you out there, man. Haven't seen you slinging a whole lot of dirt lately. Uh, I've been slinging dirt since been at work. Oh, so, man. <laughs> yeah, I've been busy, man. All right, well, so, good luck, man. Try to keep that thing out of the wall. You've been in a lot of trouble on the asphalt lately. Uh, hey, I'm trying to learn. I'm pushing the, the envelope a little bit. All right, nice and easy. Texas is very tough on those right sides. Good luck. All right, thank you. All right, everybody, Christopher Schaefer there going to go ahead and get him back into his uh, turn one racing buddies here tonight as we are back. Uh, on the track here, looking at the pace car, lights are off. And we'll see if uh, we got anything extra here. Uh, with Tyler Mullet, Kevin Powell, and Jonathan Jennings, 1, 2, and 3, and Chris Leftwich, no one really has gained anything on this. I mean, a couple of guys, you know, three positions up, four positions up, but it's not uh, nothing really any kind of eyeballs to uh, really pay attention to. But let's take a look. As Tyler Mullet's going to try another restart here. Everybody's puckered right now, wondering if anything's going to happen. So we're going to actually start the race on lap six here uh, with Tyler Mollett in the lead, and let's move, rotate on back. See Jonathan Jennings dropping down a spot, allowing Chris Leftwich to get around him, but the battle's going to start already here in the back where Daniel Wilkerson is getting jammed up by, uh, looks like Jacob Reeves, who Reeves is trying to let his tires heat up here just a little bit before he really starts throwing it here into the turn. Three wide, taking a look. Whoa, man, Gary Clune now swings down to the bottom, breaking that three wide, and now we're back single file yet again. So not too bad here, and we're taking a look at Daniel Wilkerson. Wilkerson might be under fire here for just a little bit. That number 78 machine is actually on the march back, down six positions from where he originally started here in Texas. Now, I don't know if this is kind of his plan. Sit back, let everybody do their thing, and he's going to work his way on. But outside line is not where he built his car. That's what he said earlier in, the, in practice. And we see him dive to the bottom and get that spot right back from Christopher Berger. And he breaks himself back into the top 10 here. So big time moves here for, uh, for Daniel Wilkerson. Unfortunately, they are in the reverse way. Uh, and he's got to fight and figure out how to get his way back to the front. Now, I would say this is the very beginning. There's not too much going on. But a lot of drivers are really kind of weighing their options of how they're going to kind of uh, plan for the rest of this race here. Uh, if you start marching back, I mean, it's that much harder. you got to battle to get back to the front. So I think Kevin Powell is right now getting a huge run here on Tyler Molette. Goes in, bumps him there a little bit, lets him know he's there. We're riding along here with Kevin Powell. Taking a look as Jonathan Jennings is putting one of the fastest times down on the track with 29.52. Wait for him to kick it in the high gear and see him start passing a lot of these other guys. Uh, we rotate back to, you know, uh, like uh, Racing Revolution with the number 53 of Robert Rader out there. The first thing he says is, the only way I can be fast is if I'm out there in the fresh air. Right now, Tyler Molette's real happy with that, with the fresh air. But Jonathan Jennings is going to get real tired of sitting back there in the turbulent air coming off the backside of his, of his brother's car here. And I expect to see that 91 Chevrolet sit up to the front. But checking out in the chat here a little bit, I think Daniel Paulus has joined me here in the booth. A little late here, buddy. Uh, yeah, I just got home at 8 o'clock when I saw that you guys were already starting, so... I was in the VC waiting. I just didn't want to interrupt. All right, man. Well, definitely taking a look at it here. These guys starting at 8 o'clock, blasting away here at Texas Motor Speedway. 100 laps here, and a lot of times we see these things go about caution-free, but unfortunately, lap zero, I mean, before he was able to pass the finish line, uh, slight left tires down in the grass, and Matthew Powell was ended, ended up into uh, 
into a, an oblivion here, but I think Chris Schaefer just messed up again. I'm showing a little issue here. Back with the number 23 again. I don't know if he's having maybe some mechanical problems out here with that number 23 car. Oh, my gosh. That's it. He's done. <laughs> he broke that left front tie, uh, that toe link, and he's, he's, he's going to be out of it. Wow. And we just talked to him, too. It's been an exciting race so far. Like you mentioned, the cautions. We're not even, like, starting to race, and there's cautions, all right? And we just saw that replay there, so it's pretty interesting what's going on here. And we're going on lap 13 here at Texas, so I can only imagine what the rest of the race is going to play out like. Oh, yeah. Over in the Racing Revolution, Alex Forget on the in, uh, entrance of Dover ruined his entire race by getting bit by the barrels. And I think Chris Schaefer just got attacked by the tires at Texas. So that is going to be it for Mr. Schaefer. He made 11 laps here tonight. Uh, well, made it 10 laps starting on 11. And I think he's going to be down pit road uh, for a good remainder here of the race. Taking a look at the Mc McConey setup shop number three Chevrolet here of Jacob Reeves. Right now he's starting to put a little pressure here. On Chris Left, which is the battle for the lead, actually is beginning. Let's rotate up front where Kevin Powell has slid underneath Tyler Molette. Now, remember what I was saying earlier about that kind of the tire situation here. Who's going to press mm -hmm. early and who's going to press late? But Jonathan Jennings, outside line for him, and you see the massive run he got. He was sitting off by about half a second, and now he's caught back up to him. So interesting to see Jennings actually sitting back yet again in this number one. Uh, and, you know, number one here in the championship points, third place, and we're kind of watching these guys fight in front of him and just sitting back and letting the race come to him. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would just let the race come to you. I wouldn't want to push hard here. It's Texas Motor Speedway. You know how the tires handle here. If you're going to run hard, it's just going to wear the tires out because you know how this track is with tires. And I feel like the 93 of Powell and 94 Molette, if they keep battling like this really hard against each other, I feel like they're going to use so much tire wear that the 91 of Jonathan Jennings is just going to gain tremendously, and he's just going to overtake the lead here. So I think Jonathan Jennings is just holding back there and really relaxing and letting the lead come to him. Yeah, taking a look back at actually Mike Samia back here. He has been up here battling for seventh place along with Daniel Wilkerson for quite some time now. He has been on the move uh, since really – the beginning of the race he's, he's picked up four positions and I, well, I mean the beginning of the race he started really gaining back into that p7 p6 area right back around lap five he's really kind of tumbling up trying to get that number 44 shoney chevrolet to the front here but daniel wilkerson's really making it hard for him to find a, a clean lane to get around and i just don't know if he's going to be able to find one as this giant gaggle of cars right here samia clune Justin McMahon, the 96 of Jackson Lomax, and followed up with Christopher Berger. So these five guys right here are really battling out here on the track, and that's exactly what I enjoyed seeing. Uh, instead of actually, you know, three cars clutched and driving away with this, uh, these guys are allowing for a fantastic race here as they pulling away. But check out McMahon. Remember what I was saying? Justin McMahon actually started a lap down here, everybody. And that number 24 down onto the bottom. He's going to slide his way back to the front. Now, it's interesting seeing McMahon in the 24. Normally, I see him in the group six number 20. But Ed is not going to be here for tonight. That number 24 machine has changed his, uh, changed his paint here. So we'll see how well he does out here. It may be a new number. Uh, new luck for him. Kevin Powell, Jennings, and Tyler Molette. Molette's dropped down to third now, and I think Jennings may make a move here in just a moment, but I want to make sure. Turn one racing with Christopher Bergen, and Jackson Lomax. These guys are communicating here and not getting ready to wipe each other out because this is a huge battle back here, really, for that 10th through 12th area. And that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to run so far into the corner where your car's just going to slide off over corner entry because if so, or I meant corner exit, that could put the driver like on the outside lane at risk of oh, no. wrecking. Gary Clune. Whoa. And there it is. Caution. 11. Mary Clune went around there. Wow. Looks like Gary Clune may have had a little contact. I would say that Gary Madu. In the 63 Ford, we saw him on the move, and I don't know if something happened because he started getting a huge run here for the past couple of laps, and Gary Clune got caught up in it. Hold on just a second, everybody, and we'll kind of figure out what happened here.
by taking a look at it overhead here. It looks like the battle actually was not with Madu. It looks like the 96 out there of Jackson Lomax may have been here on the inside. And they were going to call this, I guarantee, an iRacing incident. Two guys meeting up in exactly the same spot. And there was the contact there. So Pit Road has fired off here. Uh, and the rest of the day, pretty much everybody's coming down, tires, uh, and then we're going to be at it. So Gary Clune, I, I would say, taking a look at Clune's car, I would wonder if I can get an air we go. Yeah, That's what I'm see. looking for here. Or 96 slid up here. Yeah, our racing's been pretty tough here with the net code. Mm, it's really hard to tell. I. It looks like the 96 when he came up as the 11 of Gary Clune was trying to come down a little bit. And it looks like 96 just hooked him in the cord paneler and just sent him around. And that's what I was mentioning earlier on. Yeah, give it to Clune. Check out him for saving the car here. Watch this. I That's mean, no nice contact kick. with the wall. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. You need experience. <laughs> that you do. Well, under caution here, lap 22. Gary Clune has dropped down to 17th, but he still has a race car, so that's always good. Uh, a couple of laps here under caution. Jonathan Jennings looks like a quick pit stall time for him. Everybody took, it seems to be four tires and back out onto the track. But interesting for a four tire pit stop call so early into the race. That only leaves two more down there for the remainder of the race. I don't know if, uh, I mean, I'm not racing. I don't know if that'd be the call for me here is seeing them take it so soon. Uh, I, you know, maybe they're gambling on another caution, not coming, uh, you know, coming back out. I would, uh, taking a look at some of those pits, you know, some of these pit times here, no one out there really kind of, uh, doing anything different. No one, no one, everybody taking four tires and everything else. And that's the only thing I'm trying to take a peek at here is what, if there's anything different, um, for some of these, uh, some of these drivers here. Let me see if I can find a uh, kind of a pit stop time. There we go. saying actually Jackson Lomax only went 19 laps on that last one so far he's gained 11 positions here in the race for Jackson Lomax breaking into the top 10 biggest mover of the race is Lomax mm -hmm. person actually on the march down is Matthew Powell but that was the original caution that came out earlier in the race it's interesting to see Christopher Schaefer's uh lap 11 incident with the tires uh did not bring out a caution but Seeing that it did not involve any other any other cars out there, that is not going to be uh, any sort of an issue. So Jennings, Powell, Molette, and Dylan Goodwin actually tumbling around up here with the uh, the top four drivers. Glad to see him up here. And Jacob Reeves. Jacob Reeves sitting now fifth. Chris Lefwich sixth. Wilkerson seventh. Justin McMahon eighth. Madu moves up ten positions, sitting ninth. And Jackson Lomax round down our top ten here. Uh, these 20 drivers are definitely looking for more drivers out here starting next season. Guys, once again, look at that uh, doghouseracingleague.com or you can find them out on Facebook and apply to the league. They're always looking for fantastic drivers because if you see how little mistakes are done here, uh, you know, uh, it, it's great league to run in. It's not, you know, an eight-lap shootout and we're under caution. Another eight-lap shootout and we're under caution. Uh, it's not like that here. This one uh, is starting to get a, little, a few of them here. It's not looking too good for some of these guys uh, who have been in the back or in the front, but it's it's we're, we're going to knock kind of knock out the rust here and get back underway. Pace car lights are out. Barney's in the booth waiting on them. They're going to sit at the restart. This is not a four to four off and fire. See so if that Geico restart zone will be underway here in just a moment. Come on, Jonathan Jennings. Here we go. Throw that, throw that arm out there, Barney. Here we go. 
Jonathan Jennings in the front. Kevin Powell will be sitting to his inside, but expect Jennings to go ahead and rotate midway through this turn, allow Powell to get through, and uh, he's going to sit back actually behind him here. Kevin Powell in the Monster Energy 93 Chevrolet out front for him, and they continue this charge here. Uh, got drivers at least too wide here heading on back, but I'm waiting to see if Tyler Millett has kind of uh, weighed his options here with a four-tire pit stop, what those percentages look like. Can he push a little harder because he was actually on the march back from where he originally started on the pole here tonight? So is he going to continue his charge forward and put more pressure on our guys here who are in the lead, or does he not? Jacob Reeves, you see him having to check up there a little bit, not to run into the back of Tyler Mollett and fold him up there. Now uh, it sets him up once again with Dylan Goodwin to his outside. So battle continues on for that uh, fourth position. And Reeves not going to be able to clear that 13, sitting right there on his, on the outside of his right quarter panel. But I'm waiting to see if Jonathan Jennings decides to slide his way on up through the lead. Notice how he's taking a much higher line than his brother that is directly in front of him in that number 93 Chevrolet. Fantastic moves here at Texas, and we're really seeing how these guys, there are multiple lanes that can be driven, but who set their car up for which line? Did they set it up for high line? Did they set it up for mid? Or is it a paint runner? So we'll see. As Jonathan Jennings has yet to go down and touch the paint as of yet on any turn. So I think Jennings may be trying to sacrifice uh, a little bit of speed riding the outside line here. Oh, of course. He must be tuned in the broadcast. I had to go down there and touch that line, didn't he? <laughs> he's all over the back of the 93 of Howell right now. Looks like he's going to the inside. Try to take this lead away here at Texas. As he does, he is clear. He's going to slide up. Look at the 93 as he's going to try to now get a run around his brother again. But the 91 of Jonathan Jennings is back in the lead here. Man, not yeah, no surprise there. Jonathan Jennings, fantastic move. But take a look. It's Jacob Reeves and number three Chevrolet. Oh, no. Kevin Powell starts getting loose outside line. Looks like he didn't like that side draft. Came a little loose on the left side, kicked him out to the side. But Kevin Powell getting it back under control here as Jacob Reeves capitalizes, rotates up in front, almost checks up just a hair to drive Kevin Powell a little more out of his line. So single file for everyone here, at least in the top 7, 10 positions here as we rotate back to Mike Samia. And the number 44, Chevrolet, once again, trying to get a little farther into the top 10 here. As we saw, Samia and Wilkerson will battle in it out. Now Jackson Lomax up 11 positions, setting ninth, and that 96 Chevrolet continues to go on. Right now, top 10, all Chevrolets except our good friend out there. And the number Whoa. 13 to Chris Leftwich, but Tyler Millett's off the grass. Hold Whoa. on, Tyler. Might go around. Keeps it straight. Oh, don't come back up. Ah. Wow. <laughs> Tyler Molette. Wow. He just dropped so many positions. He's going to, yeah, he's going to have to pray for a caution or a better pit stop time for that one. He just slid all the way back to the 19th position. Uh, we're still ahead of Chris Schaefer, who's been down pit for almost 14 minutes now. Definitely there was what? some, uh, there was a, there was a change up here. Uh, that well, I've got to find out what happened to what happened to Tyler because I don't know what caused yeah. the contact uh, to get it, these it, guys all the way back. It might have looked like he got a little loose, or his rear just came around on him maybe a little bit from the camera angle there. But like you said, we are gonna have to look at replay soon. Um, and another driver at one point out is Jonathan Jennings, as you see on this replay here. You see. Let's see. They're going down the back straight away. Yeah, I was say it might take a little bit here, maybe half a lap here. I don't know if a contact with the 13 or if he got loose. Let's see. Here he goes. I think this is the turn he comes. Out of... No, I think nope. we are have to. Hmm. Let's see. Interesting, because it'll be this one or the following lap. All right, we're going to yeah. try to speed this up a little bit. Figure out what happened here. Oh, there it was. See him touch that paint? Yep. Oh, he got out of the apron. You don't want to touch the paint on the apron because that will send your car going wonky here at Texas Motor Speed Bay. But like I was saying, let's talk about Jonathan Jennings really quick. Now, he was really strong at Coda. He was really strong at Homestead. And now he's out in front here at Texas Motor Speed Bay. I mean, is he a championship threat or what? 
he is in the lead. There's, there's no doubt about it. He has absolutely nothing to lose here as he's continuing his charge forward. I know uh, on the wins here so far, he's just been really, uh, really getting it here. I mean, he won the season opener at Indianapolis, so there's no, <laughs> you know, it didn't stop for him. He continues uh, to kind of win, 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 win here, and I don't see him slowing down at all. Really, where he ends up from here on out is just kind of a moot point of how he's been doing. I mean, he, I mean, he wins it at Homestead. You know, he wins at Richmond. It's just, it's so many different tracks he keeps winning at. I mean, I'm starting to lose count. Jonathan Jennings is a piece of cake uh, to win this one here. As we'll, uh, here, I'll show you since you're a little late. These championship points that we got lined up. Jennings, way ahead. Wow. This being the, yeah, this being the season finale here, that's going to really seal the deal. Uh, and really? Really, this, this kind of puts the dagger in the heart of everybody out here racing, seeing that Jennings is, is out there, out front by so many points, and now out there and leading by over a second here in the race. I think that's pretty much going to seal the deal here tonight if he keeps going like this. I mean, but if he gets a DNF, well, that's a different question, but I don't think that's going to happen tonight. As you see, Powell in the 93, and it looks like the three of Reed Reeves, battling here side by side going into turn one now now Powell's getting under fire from Dylan Goodwin. 51 Goodwin. yep Dylan Goodwin seeming to be making some decent moves here following along Jacob Reeves in the number three Chevrolet now Jacob's really been kind of trying to put the work here on Kevin Powell Powell's trying to return back to the lead where he was but it seems to kind of really be fading back here a little bit but don't knock out Kevin Powell he definitely sits back he just like Jonathan Jennings he sits back, he lets the race come to him, and then he charges back forward. But Jennings not taking any chance on this one. We see him pushing out front, getting that fresh air, and now he's being able to really uh, scamper away with this one with at least a second and a half lead. Powell still battling here for third as he's alongside Dylan Goodwin. And we'll rotate back through the pack here in just a moment. Yeah, let's do it now. I want to take a look at Mike Leftwich in the 60. Looks like Samia is actually on the march back. Samia so was up there battling in the top 10. Now he's down to 17. He did take tires on his last pit stop on lap 21. So that 44 machine, whatever adjustment he made, he's got to put it back. It is not working out very well for him uh, in this second stint. I, I'm interested, what adjustment did he make? Because I would probably not want that to happen. Samia still 18th position. Michael Dow will be the last one, and then, uh, unfortunately, Michael Samia will be dropping down to the final place here. So I don't know if Mike Samia, something happened. Uh, either he's got a mechanical problem or a bad pit stop, uh, but he is on. Uh, he can't go any farther back unless he goes a lap down. It looks like he's off pace. It might be a mechanical issue. Yeah, taking a look at our last lap times here, Samia, 31 seconds. Uh, not looking too good, even if he was running back with his faster times of a 29.77. He would be up there with the uh, the guys in the top five right now. So I don't know what's going on with that 44 machine, but he's gonna have to work on that later on here in the run. Let's see if we can rotate up to, uh, where's Gary Madden? There's Madden, there he is. Ninth position for him, he's up 10. Not too bad. Look at Gary Clooney, he's already in the back in top 10. Oh. Keep an eye on the, oh, contact there. Whoa, baby, hold it on there. Taking a look at the 94. Tyler Molet on the inside. Remember, he shot through the grass. Look at him returning back to this one. Ninth position. Gary Maddu sitting uh, in the 63, now 10th. Followed behind with Gary Clune and Christopher Berger. So not too shabby here uh, for Gary Maddu. Looks like we got at least one Canadian out there. I know Andrew St. Coeur wasn't able to make it. Uh, and Gary Maddu just, just got bumped as we watched Gary Clune slide on by. Uh, out of the top 10 here a lot of drivers kind of weighing their options here you know how do we how do we plan our next attack Powell and McMahon have passed Reeves up there in the top three so Reeves gets bumped out sitting fourth Wilkerson been on the charge lately Wilkerson is down a position from where he originally started but he's actually returning back so slow slow start but he's actually returning back as the tires come around the track starts to rubber up and these guys are really starting to really able to select a different line and kind of make the adjustments that they need to make. For sure. And as you see on the top left of your screen, we're on lap 45 now. 
We are five laps away from halfway already out of this 100-lap race here at Texas. And as you see these drivers, if we continue having these green flag runs so far like this, when do we expect them to pit? Well, now with that caution, everybody pit back on lap 21. We may be seeing them with one more stop here around uh, probably about lap 60, 65 is where I would assume they would pit. And I think, you know, drivers like Jonathan Jennings or Kevin Powell are going to try to drive it all the way to the end on that. And that would be absolutely really, really, like I said, I'm so baffled at once again, that 91 Chevrolet breaking out front again, getting away from this pack. And these guys, these guys, I think they've got something for them. It's just not here. It's, it's, they've got to figure out yep. what they're doing because Jennings and Powell make a lot of these setups. They, they t do a lot of tuning here, and they, they'll they actually give away their setups to these fellow drivers and say, come beat me in my own setup. And right now, I've got a few guys out here that just, they're not able to beat them on their own setup. So really hats off here to Jonathan Jennings and Kevin Powell for once again putting a clinic on here at Texas Motor Speedway. And that's the thing. Once you're in front and you're taking that lead away from the rest of the drivers, the drivers behind you are going to be battling constantly, and they're always in dirty air. And that is what affects your car. It makes your car a little bit slower, but when you're out in the lead in the clean air, it's going to make you like fly off like a rocket because there's no other cars around you. Yeah, you would also think that it would, uh, it would cause a huge fuel consumption issue being out front, but it actually isn't. You actually use more fuel in the dirty air uh, because it's trying to scramble, trying to find the clean air to burn. Uh, but Jonathan yeah. Jennings, you know, he's going to have a piece of cake. He's, uh, he's actually probably throttling it down. You notice how he's got out to that two-and-a-half-second lead and holding. He's not continuing to pull away, and I don't think he wants to make any kind of mistake here. So he's sitting back, got a nice, clean area, uh, and he's just going to kind of do his thing. You know, Jonathan Jennings has nobody to really worry about here. As you can see, he's got nobody on the track, nobody to follow along as we get in the Michelin <laughs> Chase copter cam here. And, and really, he's just, he's hey, he's got nothing to worry about. Let's see if we can find something looking back. Let's see if we can find something looking back. There he is. The two little yeah. specks are our next guy. Decent lead right there. Nothing to worry about, like you said. I think he's not even looking at his mirror. He's just going and not even worrying about the laps. He's just hoping he can get there to the end. As we are on lap 50, we are halfway through this race, guys. What are we expecting in the second half of this race, and who do you think is going to win here tonight? Yeah, I was going to say, i got at least 13 eyeballs out there in the chat, so I know you guys are watching. Give me a little something out there. Uh, show me a little love. Show me, you know, kind of tell me what you think about this race here so far. I know sometimes the Doghouse Racing League, there isn't a whole lot of side-by-side -side battles, and I think that's because it's an open setup league, and these guys definitely are able to tune themselves away from the competition. And we're seeing a lot of these other ones, you know, these other leagues trying to do the same thing. As, as I would love to see a lot more pack racing, uh, but I think that's what they're trying to side away from here is the, the amount of pack racing that these guys do. It just it doesn't bring that much uh, entertainment to the, to the drivers out there, uh, especially, uh, you know, one, ones that want to come away with an easy win. Yeah, and that's the thing. With these other leagues, you see them doing more pack racing. But like you said, the drivers get kind of bored for doing that, and they actually just want to try their own setup and want to see how they can improve themselves in these leagues with open setups to see if they can dominate and win races against other people. Yeah, hats off to Christopher Schaefer coming back out here and uh, uh, hanging out with the Inferno Motorsports team in the 23 Getting Hook Chevrolet. Uh, he's actually been able to get uh, repaired after a 20-minute uh, time down pit road, got a tow link on the car, uh, and that car seems to be handling a lot better than what it originally started for him. So Chris Schaefer out there turning some laps. So you'll see him fly by a good bit of drivers out here because he's got a nice set of fresh tires. But uh, some of these other guys, you just notice that the, the amount of wear on these tires is starting to really lapse in as we take a look at some of these last lap times. 30-28 for Jennings, 30-31 for Powell, McMahon with a 30-28. That's, let's take a look at the best. So we're already falling off by almost a second off our best times here. Uh, and really, it's not too bad. I mean, pitting back on lap 21, 30, 33 laps in, that's not too bad. 
not too bad at all. It could be a lot worse because with some of these tracks that we go to, the tire wear is really, really bad. Yeah, take a look at the battle back here. It looks like actually Jackson Lomax getting around Tyler Molet. Molet, man, the way Mo Tyler Molet is driving, it looks like he's on, on a mission right now. He almost just ripped the front nose off of Jackson Lomax. Lomax trying to run a clean line here, but that is not looking too solid there. Yeah, look how, look how, man, Tyler yeah. Millett now up to six. So he moves around Dylan Goodwin here and really flying around. Now pit road visited by Daniel Wilkerson. So he's going to be the first one to come down pit. That might be a good call here, seeing the amount of fall off that we're, that we're noticing. But Lomax following along right now with Tyler Millett. Jackson Lomax up 14. So whatever Lomax has been doing, he's really been uh, turning his races around him and Christopher Berger at the same time. So I'm glad to see them here joining the Doghouse Racing League. And you notice these guys, I mean, no offense to them, but they were running in the bottom five of the race, every race in the beginning of this season. And the more they practice, the more they've come out here, the more they put time down, they're now at least top 10 drivers. These guys are making it, and they're doing it. I mean, Lomax, Christopher Berger, sitting sixth and seventh, right, and right, you know, one after the other. So this is exactly what you want to see from the turn one racing guys, uh, really coming out here and putting on a show when, they, unfortunately, uh, Matthew Robinson is no longer joining these uh, two guys. I think he ended up with some uh, things at the house and uh, some scheduled conflict. Chad Tucker out there in the chat. Number 44, still hurting from the spin out Tuesday. Yeah, maybe. It looks like Mike Samia is already down pit. Gary Clune and Bobby Goodwin are joining down pit as well. So in the front, Jennings and Justin McMahon. He started originally from the pits. Now, I just don't know what the heck is going on because McMahon started from the pits a lap down. Uh, remember Hunter Simpson, Dakota, he started from the pits. I just don't know what in the world is, is going on from at least one person coming down pits. But speaking of one person coming down pits, you wouldn't expect oh. coming out of turn, Kevin Powell. One thing I want to point out, Patrick, is when these drivers are pinning and the drivers are staying out, now the drivers that pitted and are coming out now to go back on track, you will see them catch up dramatically from the drivers that didn't pit be um, before them because with the drivers with the new tires, they, are, they have so much more grip on track that they are just having higher speeds than the driver that is on the old tires. And we're seeing Jonathan Jennings working his way down pit. That puts Justin McMahon into the lead. If he can lead one lap, he'll get another five bonus points here. Jacob Reeves, Dylan Goodwin still hanging out there, but uh, McMahon figures out the best. He says, man, uh, we're just going to go ahead and bring it on down, man. Uh, no sense in kind of wasting any more. Jacob Reeves going to go ahead and lead himself a lap. There's five more points. So out in front for Jacob Reeves. Uh, he's up eight positions so far. He has dropped off a good bit, about a second and a half. 29.48 was his best time. His last lap time was about a 30.98. So he's got to really uh, kind of weigh his options here of how long he's going to remain out onto the track. He may want to come down. He got those five bonus points to come down and pit now. Here he comes. There he comes. All right, Jacob Reeves now after that uh, ch uh, that cone has made Left. the determination he's coming down and he's going to be followed by Mike Leftwich and Chris Leftwich as well. Ma Michael Dow, yep, he's coming down. Christopher Simon, what does he do? 27 Toyota staying out. Hang out. Yeah, so right now Christopher Simon looks like he may have snuck by to get a lead lap there. And now we're, now the big shuffle up. Now we're going to see where everybody ends up onto the track because it's going to be a little confusing. Is everybody on the track? As we take a look at a track map here, they're, they're everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you can see they're everywhere. This is, uh, is going to decide who your leader is going to be after these pit cycles go through. And it could potentially be a race winner. As you see, 27 of Simon still out on track, hasn't pitted yet. And as you see the new drivers that did pit, you will see them catch up to the 27 dramatically soon. Yeah, Christopher Simon running a 31.2. He's getting a couple lead laps in. Jonathan Jennings will then resume the lead. If you notice, Jennings uh, probably off by about a second and a half off Kevin Powell, which Powell came in a lap earlier. 
Justin McMahon came in uh, uh, actually two laps later than Powell. Uh, he'll be sitting third, but I believe he is also going to be at least a second off the pace. So we'll just see where one, two, and three end up here when we get back uh, around Christopher Simon here, which Simon has come down pit. Jennings, Powell, McMahon as they cross the line here. It's going to straighten up some of our times out there. Seeing that the leader has come down, but not... <laughs> Not in the lead for any longer. 64 uh, laps almost complete here this time by as Jennings, Powell, and McMahon sitting one, two, and three. Does anybody have any choices here as these guys are pretty strung out? Not too many guys really battling uh, side by side here on this one. I think I got a Gary Madu back here uh, with number 13 of Chris Lefwich. Nothing much happening right now. Everybody spread out one lap 65 and we're left off right where we were with the Jonathan Jennings in the 91 just continuing to put on the clinic here to wrap up this championship battle here. I think he's got it made for him here tonight if nothing changes. But don't count out the 93 of Powell sitting in second. And don't forget the 24 of McMahon who could be an upset winner here tonight. Yeah, only three tenths behind us. Chris Leftwich on Gary Maddu here. A couple of drivers ended up some laps down after that pit cycle. Christopher Simon, Nick Shell came down. He had a, actually a, almost a 17-second pit stall time. Mike Samia, he'll be a lap down in the number 44. And Gary Clune. Clune actually came down for almost a minute. So something happened. Uh, he either sped in or ended up with some damage. So that 55 seconds for Gary Clune, uh, extremely detrimental for his race. But that leaves only the top 14 drivers. Still on the lead lap here is Michael Dow. Uh, is trying to stay ahead of the curve of uh, some of our times of 29 seconds. Uh, he's going to be looking pretty close to Jonathan Jennings creeping up the back end of his car here and passing him. And he might be passing very soon here. Yeah, take a look back. That is Jonathan Jennings right there. So he's going to be end up in some trouble here. And I really want to keep an eye on Jonathan Jennings as he runs into lap traffic now. Uh, and re really kind of where he's going to end up and continue fighting around here. He's got a lot of drivers wanting to stay on the lead lap, wanting to continue the battle. I mean, if a caution comes out, you know, Christopher Simon gets his lap back. You know, every time, well, now his next shell is going to get his lap back. His shell just passed, just passed Christopher Simon. But it, it's kind of that, that urge to stay out front. you got to stay on the lead lap. If a caution does come, if somebody spins out from a fresh set of tires here uh, and plows it straight into the wall, the last thing I want to do is gamble on a lucky dog position uh, for me to stay out front. Let's rotate back to right now to Nick Shell. Shell looks like he's trying to see if he can get his lap back, actually. Shell last pit on lap 60 a little bit later than everybody else. So the 04 Chevrolet charging his way forward. You see him passing Kevin Powell, who's in second position here. And see if he can run down actually Jonathan Jennings and get back on the lead lap. I like the courageous move. I think it's very uh, uh, gutsy, but man, really go for it here. You're going to have to go for it at this point. Try your best to try to get as close as possible to 91 here of Jonathan Jennings. As you see, Jonathan Jennings still has a second and a half lead over the 93 of Powell. But Powell's coming in closer and closer each lap, so... We'll see how this shakes out as he sees having a little fall off right now. Yeah, as we're rotating on through, less than 30 laps to go in the Loud Pedal Racing 150 here at Texas Motor Speedway. We appreciate you guys joining us. We're going to cut to commercial here real quick, and we'll be right back. The Doghouse Cup Series is proud to be sponsored by Shoney's. Shoney's is today's all-American kitchen. Open daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Shoney's guests can count on quality, delicious food along with warm, friendly service. Stop by one of our West Virginia locations to try their freshly prepared legendary breakfast bar and don't forget to take home a whole strawberry pie. Shoney's, delicious food and friendly service since 1947.
Oh, pal. Alrighty, and we are back, everybody. Hanging in there for just a moment. Nick Shell right now sitting in that 15th position, rotating up front where Daniel Wilkerson is under fire by Tyler Molet. Molet now aiming for that second position. Now, remember, Molet had a very, very fast time out here, out there on the pole, but was he able to get enough here and figure out how to battle his way back to the front? Can he get it? Can he reach out there and get, uh, and get Jonathan Jennings? He may be the one to do it. He might as well be the one to do it. As you see, he is in second place right now. Jonathan Jennings is, has a second and a half lead over Millette, but Millette is closing, and he's closing in fast as we are going on lap 75 as the laps are winding down. Let's see if Millette can put on a show here for the end. Oh, yeah, looking pretty tough here. As you notice, Jonathan Jennings' lead actually dwindling away. Right now, Jennings, I don't know if he's sandbagging the here a little bit. Molette now to almost a second behind Jonathan Jennings. Jennings actually, yeah, I would almost swear he's sandbagging it here. Right now, Molette laying some of his faster times down. Still the only driver, well, one of the only drivers there in the top five, still running in under a 30-second lap. Here he comes. Now down three more tenths off that lap as Tyler Molette still on the run. Now wait to see if Jennings decides to pick up the pace here. And, and see if he can keep him behind because it's going to be Boy. looking pretty tough. Here comes Very Tyler Mullet. Tough. I don't know what's going on for 91 Jennings. I don't know if he, I don't know. He's just falling back really dramatically right now. I mean, did you think he used his tire wear up? Yeah, I don't know. It's it, I, I wouldn't think so. I think Jonathan Jennings is letting Tyler Mullet burn his tires off here because something's up with Tyler. Remember how he spun out? and he's been able to actually fight through the entire rest of the field and get back to the front. And how do you catch Jonathan Jennings when he had a two-second lead even after Pitt and now pass him? And now Tyler Molette putting on putting it on here as he's now out three-quarters of a second, now over a second over Jonathan Jennings is Daniel Wilkerson. He's charging back forward, and he, now he's going to stay in the front. So this is awesome job here uh, by a lot of these drivers really not, you know kind of showing up from nowhere but loud pedal racing of Daniel Wilkerson and Tyler Mullet sitting one and two. Justin McMahon sitting fourth. So right now, this could be a clean sweep by the loud pedal racing if Justin McMahon can figure out how to make up about another second and a half to pass uh, Jonathan Jennings uh, from uh, East, uh, Elite Southern Motorsports. That would be amazing here tonight. But let's focus in on the 94 Mullet. I mean, were we expecting him to come back from... Pit Road, I mean, think about it. Jonathan Jennings had a two and a half second lead. He caught Jonathan Jennings. The 94 had an issue earlier tonight. I mean, I really thought Jonathan Jennings was going to put this one in the bag, but I mean, they're proving us wrong right now. Yeah, notice how Jennings actually fell off by a second. Notice he's starting to pick up the pace. Here he comes. So either Molette's falling off or Jennings is speeding up. Molette has dropped to a 30.34 time. Jonathan Jennings dropped to a 30.37. So Jennings was sandbagging it here and letting him do it. Jennings is actually going to be following behind these guys. Wait to see him turn on the afterburners here because I think Jennings is probably going to wait for the last 15, 14 laps, uh, and then he's really going to kick it here into the end. He might be waiting for the laps to window down here and get a good battle for the end here. Try to make a last lap move here or something. But, I mean, if I was Millette, do not look in the mirror right now. Just keep driving. Don't worry about the 91 of Jennings. I mean, he's got to get past the 78 of Daniel Wilkerson here first. Yeah, they got a good bit of work to do to get their, you know, to kind of fight back to the front. I know we're still waiting to see uh, if we can see Tyler Millette get a win. We haven't seen a win out of him yet so far this season. Right now, Jonathan Jennings sitting with one, two, I uh, believe three, four, and he's aiming for his fifth here uh, tonight. So Jennings taking a peek, watching these two guys duke it out in front of him with 19 laps left to go here in the loud pedal racing 150. Molet doing a fantastic job out there. Is Wilkerson gonna pass him here? I don't think so. Wilkerson's just gonna kind of sit back and let his buddy drive here if Tyler Molet has the faster car. And that might well be the case that Tyler Millett has the faster car this whole time. I mean, I don't know what Jonathan Jennings is doing, but he just keeps falling back. 
gaining and then he's falling back again and now he's starting to gain once again so I don't know what he's doing I don't know if he's just trying to play with his fuel I don't know if he's just playing with his tire wear or he's just waiting for something to happen he's top two yeah I don't know Jennings is sitting right back in that aerodynamic pocket here but here he comes look at that half a second made up on that turn here he comes yep Jonathan Jennings what in the world man he, <laughs> what a joke look at the speed <laughs> Oh, he's going to the inside. Here he goes. Jonathan Jennings back in the lead. Wow. I think that was set up. I really do. 15.32 between turn one and two. Tyler Molette with a 15.84. Wow. wow. I really wasn't. Uh, I want to know how he just came up with the speed. He hit right in that aerodynamic bubble, oh, waited well, a little bit, what? and then launched. Let's come back. Yeah, Tyler Molette trying to see if he can get a little something for him here. I think Jonathan Jennings is at least trying to make it a close race here. <laughs> Watch him pull. Look at, Look at that pull. I, I really want to know how he's getting such a good corner exit. It's like they get really close coming into the corner, and then, bam, the 91 shoots off like a rocket. Whoa, Justin McMahon, hold on. Here he goes, taking a look out there in the chat. Chad Tucker saying jetting cheats and speed hacks. Uh, he's definitely got something going on. Some people say grip hacks, some say speed hacks. Right now we are seeing Daniel Wilkerson coming down pit. But look who's sitting in second right now, 15 to go. It is McMahon and once again. Let's see if he can do anything to the 91 of Jennings. Not that far behind if he can just Staying that draft, get a help from Tyler. I think he's got a shot, but with these two battling, that's just going to let the 91 pull away once again, so I don't know what they're thinking here. That's all right. They're battling back and forth. I think what would make me more curious right now is that Daniel Wilkerson had to pit. If that means Daniel Wilkerson had to pit, there's a good chance I got a lot of guys out here about to run out of fuel. And if they're about to run out of fuel with 10 laps to go, uh, these guys may be kind of, oh, what do I do? What do I do? And do I come down and get maybe right side? Do I come down and only get left side? Or do I come down fuel and go? So we'll see if any, any of these other guys are going to have to bounce back in uh, and refuel here because it's looking pretty tight. I'm wondering if Jennings was actually cutting the engine or, or clutching it there a little while to see if he could save enough fuel to get to the end. Tyler Molette dropping down to fourth. Jacob Reeve sitting third. McMahon is second. So a lot of different switch-ups here, and now we put another uh, another little, little little Easter egg out there for you guys. <laughs> is 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 now pit strategy back into play? Are these guys going to have to go back in, get fuel, and try this again? Jonathan Jennings may be running out of fuel on this one. I mean, I'm very confused or interested as to why Daniel Wilkerson had to come back down. He took a six-second pit stall time in that number 78 Chevrolet. So I know he only took fuel. No tires, so something's going on. And I'm wondering if any of these drivers out here are starting to look at that fuel gauge, kind of tapping on yep. it to see if we can get just a little more out of the car. And when you think about that, I'm Jennings now with, I, I mean, with 10 to go, with 10 to go almost, I mean, he's probably on full throttle right now. I mean, but look at it. It's like, McMahon's catching up again, so I don't know if he's running low on fuel. I don't know if he's clutching the car or what, but look, here comes the 24 McMahon once again. Coming to the outside of the 91 Jennings, I I think he's trying to save some fuel because he knows he's going to be really, really close. Yeah, he's got to be very, very careful what he decides to do here. Here we're taking a look at Justin McMahon, who's just taking the lead. Firing around here, no problems right now. Jacob Reeves now, oh man, he's sitting real close. Notice how Jonathan Jennings following along as we hit a bunch of lap traffic here. McMahon still in the front. Jennings sitting second. Reeves following up in third. Ten to go. Who else needs fuel? Gary Madu came down. Uh, but he came down lap 60. Was he going to need fuel? Some of these guys are wondering, you know, kind of that different area. Uh, you know, are they going to make it? Nine to go. And do you pit if, if you're not going to make it? If you determine, I'm not going to make it. Do you pit now, or do you pit at the last at the last two or three laps and try to fire back out there? Good point. I I mean, if it was me, go for it. 
you have to go for it because if you pit and there's no caution, you're going to finish way back in the pack. So oh, I would yeah. say pit with eight to go. Try your best. See what your car can do. Hey, if you can get to the white flag and you're leading and you're running out of fuel in turn three, maybe you can coast to the finish line depending on how far you are. But, I mean, the <laughs> look at Jacob Reeves in the three. He's really close to the 24 McMahon. So this is anybody's race now, and what scares me is the fuel. Seven laps left to go here at Texas Motor Speedway, and we got a great race on our hands. And we are seeing Jacob Reeves trying to run down Justin McMahon here as McMahon is taking the lead away from Jonathan Jennings. But wait to see if Jennings opens up the throttle here yet again, and he's already, look at the speed. Yeah, some, whatever it is, Jonathan Jennings is able to open this thing up at will. Uh, with all sorts of speed. Let's ride along with Jennings and see if we see anything that looks a little interesting. Other than him sitting in fifth gear. Jonathan Jennings is not a fifth gear driver. He rides fourth uh, until he can't see straight. So I'm wondering if that's where his speed is. He has his gear for fourth. So when you see him putting around and he's doing A-OK, -okay, he is fuel saving right now sitting in fifth. But as Jacob Reeves was telling us the other day, actually he saves more fuels with higher RPMs in fourth than he does kind of grinding it out here in fifth. So notice him sucking up behind Jacob Reeves here. And I'm waiting to see if he downshifts the fourth and tries to sling on by with uh, five laps left to go here. He might. I mean, I'm, right now as I'm looking on his dashboard here, he is in fifth gear. I don't see anything changing right now with five to go. I, I really don't think he's going to have a shot. I don't know. The way he passed Tyler Molette there, you know, in, in, you know, back, back lap 70, lap 80, that was that was pretty wild here. I'm waiting to see if he can kick it into overdrive here. I um, figure out another way to get back to the front. I mean, I would love to see uh, McMahon to get a win here. McMahon last one back at Phoenix. So he's got to get himself to the front. We'll try to see if he can squeeze out one more win. And definitely here at Texas Motor Speedway, that would be awesome here. Jennings down onto the bottom still. Uh, see him following behind Reeves. So interesting to see as these guys fight through lap traffic. McMahon is starting to get a decent amount of separation here. And we'll stick with Jonathan Jennings. If I see him start moving it here, I want to move to the inside of his car and see what he's doing if anything is changing. Jacob Reeves, slight checkup here as he falls back. And now Reeves will be third as Jennings slices in front of him now. Jennings only down by three tenths of a second here and is now picking up pace. There we go. I think this is it. Two laps left to go. We're watching Jonathan Jennings reel him in here. Oh, I told you this might come down to the last lap pass. He's just waiting to make the right move at the right time. Yeah, Justin McMahon, if he's tuned into the broadcast right now, he's got to be as wide as a train car. He can't let that 91 pass him here. Right now, Jennings trying to see if he can make a move oh, here. Oh. And it's not looking too good. No. Oh, yeah. Jonathan yeah. Jennings slides up to the top trying to triangulate this turn. He's going to see if he can sling on by him, but it's white flag this time by. We'll see how oh, it goes. Dude, I wish we had an RP, uh, not an RPM, but a heart rate monitor on the 24 right now because McMahon's got a full mirror in the 91 of Jennings. Yeah, taking a look at Jennings. Notice he's shifted down to fourth. He's going to set him up here right now, revving up the RPMs, trying to see if he can slide by McMahon. Oh. Outside line for Jonathan Jennings. Here he comes, McMahon is staying on the bottom. He's going to ride up and try to cut him off here. But no, he stays on the bottom. Jennings spins. Jennings spins and Justin McMahon. Wins it wow. here at the Loud Pedal Racing 150 in Texas for the season finale. Fantastic. Jonathan that Jennings really gave it a little extra there at the end. And obviously those high RPMs and the tire revolutions just couldn't hold on any longer. <laughs> that was a great bow there by the 91 of Jonathan Jennings. I don't know what he was doing there, but it was great. Yeah, that was an awesome run here by all our drivers here tonight. 20, like I said, guys, if you want to race with these guys and you want top driving this is exactly what you want to do is sign up with the doghouse racing league on their facebook page or you can check them out on their website you definitely want to look at that guys doghouse racing league.com it's pretty simple can't really get away from that but this is a this was a fantastic run by all our drivers here tonight we'll go ahead and reel in a couple of them here 
uh, in just a moment before uh, before everything kind of squares away. But Justin McMahon, awesome job here by the number 24 Chevrolet of Justin McMahon. I don't know how he made it on, on fuel, but I've got to know why Daniel Wilkerson ended up having to come down pit so late into the run. That was very questionable there. I'm not sure. We are going to probably gonna have to dig a little deep into that. But um, congratulations to McMahon. Winning here at Texas Motor Speedway tonight for the season finale, and I can't wait to see what we can look forward to for season two as that's coming up very soon, and hopefully more drivers because the more drivers, the more excitement. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. These are our race results of our 20 drivers. Talk about that. Christopher Schaefer was actually able to battle back to the front and get up past uh, Powell, Matthew Powell here at the end, so that was uh... – that was something. That's why you get back out on the track. One position may mean the difference in a season, but that is going to do it for us, guys. Hold on just a moment. We're going to get the final, uh, final little piece from our guys, and let's uh, let's talk to them about the race, and we'll uh, we'll we'll see what they got to say about next season. All right, guys, appreciate you hanging out. Now we're going to catch up with our third-place finisher, Jacob Reeves. Jacob, that three Chevrolet did a fantastic job tonight. You did start way back in the ninth position, but third-place finish here for you tonight. What was the key to being fast? Uh, the key to being fast was just not burn your tires up, and uh, I did a pretty good job of that on the first run. Uh, didn't You know, had a limited amount of practice this week, but, uh, uh, you know, our number three Chevrolet was able to uh, pull it off tonight, and, that first caution, uh, well, not the one where uh, Matt got in the grass, but the other one where the or what we had to caution, that kind of threw our um, strategy, I guess, into a whirlwind. Kind of screwed us up a little bit, but um, you know, my game plan was just to try to just stay out right there. I knew that Jonathan and Justin was going to go in, and I wanted to stay out and try to get that extra five bonus points because I knew I was racing against Kevin for second in the points, and. Uh, they were talking, they were like, oh, we're going to be short. And I was looking down, and I was like, I might have enough. I was like, heck, I'm going for it. And uh, I I wished I would have had the tires to get Justin right there at the end, but I just, I burned them up just driving up through the field. Yeah, and that's why I was kind of wondering about Tyler Molette. He ended up doing the same thing. He was so, so fast out there, scored on the pole tonight, ended up getting tripped up there in the back, spun out slightly a little bit there. Uh, and then ended up uh, getting uh, marching back there now for at least the top five. But really, Texas Motor Speedway definitely where it shuffled everybody up. You know, th the lap 20 caution there with Gary Clune getting spun out. You were saying it messed up pit strategies. You know, I was very concerned on fuel. We saw Daniel Wilkerson, still a top 10 finish, had to come down and get a splash of fuel. You know, how close were you? I, I ran out going into pits. <laughs> That's how close it was. Uh, and uh, I think Justin said over the radio, he, or when he was out there doing his burnouts, uh, you know, he ran out. But I was sitting there kind of like deja vu. I mean, I remember kind of what happened when we ran Atlanta earlier this season. And I ran out of gas on burnouts, and they come down to fuel strategy. I was sitting there. I was like, uh-oh, might be two for two on fuel strategy race. But just just didn't have the tires to be able to pull it off. All right, well, this 60% fuel call that the Doghouse Racing League is doing is definitely changing it up. I haven't seen so many guys 
have to toy with fuel as much as they do in this league. But, man, we've got another uh, – I'm sure we have another season coming up here with the Doghouse Racing League. What's your outlook on the next season? Uh, just uh, to get good finishes, to be able to put this uh, McConey Entertainment, McConey Setup Shop uh, Chevrolet up front. And uh, uh, we got Fast Fridays on the side of the car as well. So um, any of you I racers uh, that want to come out there and – Run a little Fast Fridays tomorrow night. It's going to be at uh, Chicago Land for the Xfinity Series. So, um, you know, real proud of what Jeff's doing over there and real proud of what you're doing over here, Patrick, over here at uh, Simtrax. Uh, I know we caught a good race last night. And uh, you're just, you know, just, you're just real proud of all our partners that we got on the car and uh, just really looking forward to next season running good and running good for our sponsors and hopefully contending for some more wins and uh, try to get that Season 2 championship. But, uh uh, real quick shout out to uh, Kevin Powell and to Jonathan for winning the season one championship. But shout out to Kevin Powell. Uh, you know, all three of us was I you know I don't want to put down on anybody, but all three of us was more or less the class of the field this season. So uh, uh, you know, it, it, or we was able to put it all up front, and we was all able to at least uh, finish top three in points. So hopefully we can do that next season as well. Yeah, well, I, I mentioned even during the race that Turn 1 Racing really rose up here tonight. We saw uh, both Jackson Lomax and Christopher Berger toying around outside the top five uh, later in the run. I think the fuel got them as well, but it's still, uh, you know, these guys see uh, their idol, the guys who are the fast, and try to follow what you guys are doing. What can I do to be just as fast as them? And then you may, le- you may learn something from them, is they may figure out how to be just a little bit faster in a different section, and that always helps the... Uh, the league grow, but Jacob Reeves, appreciate you joining us. Congratulations on your third place finish, and we'll uh, we'll see you next season. Uh, appreciate it, Patrick. Oh yeah, Jacob Reeves, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. All right, let's get to Jonathan Jennings here, uh, our second place finisher, jo- Jonathan. The 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 fuel strategy and the toying around out here with with Justin McMahon and Tyler Molette. Talk to me about really these last last twenty laps here. Oh, it was irritating to be honest, but so I had to do it to uh, somebody else was going to. So irritating. I knew I could, but <laughs> it's irritating to race Ir- like that. Irritating, man. You were kind of you yeah. were slacking off. You had a two and a half second comfortable lead. You let them pass you, and then all of a sudden, in a matter of one turn, two turns, you were able to blast through the field, get back in the lead, and then almost slack off again. Was fuel a concern to for you tonight? Yes, I uh, ran out and won after the checkered, so I barely made it. Wow. And you were taking full tanks of fuel every time you came down pit? <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh, dude, being able to squeak it there right at the end. Jonathan, really, you come away with the Season 1 win here with the Next Gen Cup, and, and it just seems these wins, uh, you know, you were hot at the beginning of the season, you definitely came in hot at the end of the season. How do we start the next season coming up? You know, where? how do we... How do we get off on the right foot here with the next gens? I'm sure back at at different tracks. How do how do we get started? Hopefully, hot again. Um, Kansas and Darlington are uh, Darlington especially is my favorite, but yeah, those two should be some good ones for me. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what, what you know, kind of how you were able to do that, and you know how you were able to put more time in on the track, as if you don't already. And kind of show these guys, you know, what to do. You are kind of that that mark that everybody's looking for, for that amount of speed that you put out on the track and everybody trying to chase you down. But really fantastic job, man. You were able to get not only a second-place finish tonight, almost the win there with Justin McMahon. We saw you downshift to fourth. Um, <laughs> almost got him a little spin there in between three and four, but you were able to maintain. But you come away with this, you know, with the season championship. What does this mean for you and your team? Um. Uh, I mean, uh, that's what I'm. That's what I'm after. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to see my teammates finish second, third, of course. But, um, I just gotta keep doing what I'm doing and um, hopefully bring home the main championship. I think is how they're doing it. But oh uh, yeah, you're talking about the entire year championship. Well, it definitely helps mm-hmm. getting that that extra leg up here with one with one season. Uh season win here man that's 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 awesome jonathan give me give me a shout outs here man you guys for the broadcast um daniel and everybody for putting us on and everybody that puts in the effort to help during the week to make these things as fast as they are 
Rogers. Oh yeah, well, that's definitely it's it's not easy, man. <laughs> it is not easy, but you guys are doing a great job, Jonathan Jennings. Congratulations on your season win, man. Thank you. All right, that is Jonathan Jennings. Now let's go ahead and see if we can grab a hold of Justin McMahon. And I guarantee if I ask him, and I'm going to, Justin McMahon, the race win tonight, I guarantee it wasn't what you thought you were going to have here. No, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Well, it was it was an interesting strategy here, and uh, here you ran out of fuel during your burnouts. Yep, I did. <laughs> how did you know how to pedal the car just enough to stay out in front of Jonathan Jennings when he tried to turn on the afterburners and catch you here in the last couple laps? Um, I really, I really didn't. I was just kind of watching my my fuel. Um, uh, I pitted. I knew I pitted a lap after he did, and. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to make it. I was saving. I started saving with about uh, like 30 to go. Um, and it was showing me that I had about a lap and a half left of fuel. It was I was going to be to the good. Um, but I wasn't counting on that. So I was just kind of saving it. And then once I saw him turn it on, I was like, oh, uh, I guess I'm going to either finish second to Jonathan again, or I'm going to run out of fuel trying to stay in front of him. So that's when I put the hammer down and said, eh, it's all or nothing. But uh, luckily I saved just enough fuel <laughs> to get a little bit of a burnout in. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely. You know, <laughs> looking at this entire season, kind of how this all came about, I believe the last win we saw you win at was at Phoenix and now here at Texas. I mean, what's... Two- yeah. Two of my least favorite tracks. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. No kidding. I, th- I thought you were going to win it for, uh, for uh, uh, gr- uh, Group 6 Interactive last week, but so much for that one. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't start off the way I wanted it to tonight either. I uh, qualified second, and as we are getting ready to grid up, somebody came on the radio and said, don't forget to change your qualifying setup to your race setup, and I was like, oh, and I forgot to do that, and then I switched it and missed the grid, so... That's why you were lapped down. I saw you were working your way out of pits during during gridding. I was like, dude, what just happened? Yeah, luckily a caution came out right there at the start, so I wasn't able to. I didn't. I didn't lose a lap there, but uh, it definitely helped me. I mean, I had to battle back through pretty good, but yeah, it's that was just a brain fart on my end. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. You know, I kind of started thinking. I was like, all right, maybe it was another uh, like a steering wheel issue. I know Chris Schaefer had some problems. Uh, this season, Hunter Simpson had some problems. Uh, this uh, nope. this season, a couple guys had some monitors, but no, <laughs> mental error. <laughs> mental error. Way to go, Justin McMahon, uh, dude. Come on, man. So I'm what's excited, the, man. What is the outlook for this upcoming season here? You know how how do how does Justin McMahon get in the winner circle and bring bring season two championship home? Uh, well, that's season two is in question for me right now because. Uh, I don't know how much I'm actually going to be able to race, unfortunately, in season two coming up. Um, me and my wife are having our first child, so that's coming up in July. So I'm not sure how much free time I'm going to have for the first few months. But uh, I'm going to try to hop in when I can and give the guys up front hell as much as I can. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I can sneak in and get in Thursday nights. I got to talk to the wife about that one, but I'm not going to be too optimistic about it. <laughs> Man, oh, dude, I'm happy for you, but I'm sad for the league. <laughs> dude. <laughs> man, oh, man. All right, Justin, congratulations on your win here tonight for the season finale race. Give me a shout-out. Yeah, thanks. Well, first of all, I just want to say uh, thanks for you guys for doing a hell of a broadcast. You guys always do a great job. Um, thanks to Daniel for putting on this league and letting me be on a part of his team there at Loud Paddle Racing. So I want to give a shout-out to those guys. And – um also, a huge shout out to to everybody that's that races in this league. Um, you know, once in a while we'll we'll all be a little frustrated with each other with on track incidents and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's it's this is a good group of guys in this, and I don't have any hard feelings towards anybody in this league. Um, it's, it's one of the cleanest leagues that I've I've been in. Um, I mean, how how often can you go? With, without having a single caution and back-to-back races. And then it seems like this league, it happens all the time. Um, it's just a lot of clean, good, fun, hard racing with everybody in here. So I want to say thank you for all that. And uh, 
thanks for Group 6 Interactive for being the sponsor on the car and uh, everyone at home that watches. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on the clean racing out there, Justin. I, I definitely, I, I've, I haven't seen so few cautions. I know the cautions that do happen, miscommunication, slight yeah. read, or we got a net code that no one can, no one can battle. You know what I mean? Right, There's nothing right. you can do about it. But fantastic yeah. run here tonight, Justin McMahon. Appreciate yeah. you joining us, man. And I can. Oh. Uh oh. One more thing, real quick. Yeah, Sorry, and I just it. want to give a big congratulations to Jonathan on the on the championship. Oh, I know yeah. The, the two boys behind him were giving all, giving it their all to to track him down and get in front of him, but he's just he's impossible to beat sometimes. So, congrats to him on the championship, and look forward to battling him again next season, hopefully. All righty. Well, since you guys have an open setup, I say the season winner has to add weight to the car. <laughs> I don't disagree with that. <laughs> now start adding weight to the car. Let's weigh him down with an extra, you know, hundred pounds or something, you know, or. Or, or you know, eight, yeah, eighty kilos, and, <laughs> and and throttle him back a little bit, and let's see how well he can do. Then appreciate yeah, it, man, yeah. and we'll uh, yeah. we'll see what he can do. <laughs> Sounds good. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. Take it easy. All right, everybody. That's Justin McMahon, and I already see Kevin Brown out there in the chat saying congratulations, Justin. Don't forget to congratulate Jonathan Jennings coming away with that season win. But that is going to do it for us here at SimTracks Broadcasting. What an excellent round. Uh, of racing this was couple of cautions i mean we had matthew powell left side tires on the grass spin out christopher Schaefer lap 11 uh tires bit him you know and and, and kind of tore him up pretty bad and then gary clune with a little mishap there on lap 20 other than that that was it i mean lap 20 and then we had 80 solid laps of green flag racing green flag stops and everybody pile driving to get back to the front but that's going to do it man i'll tell you what I, I i can't wait to see what the next season has coming up because these guys are going to battle back and forth all day all night and then definitely the amount of tuning these guys are going to put forth uh to make sure they're fast uh is really going to be a real treat so we'll keep in mind uh look out there on the doghouseracingleague.com and you'll see the starting of the next season and if you want to sign up that's where you need to go. You can sign up there as well. Find Kevin Powell or Daniel Wilkerson. These guys will help slide you into the league uh, and make sure you get a league invite on iRacing and give it a shot. But do it from all of us here at SimTrack Broadcast. And Daniel Paul is joined alongside me, Patrick Morrison. That is going to do it. See you guys later. Be well, be safe, be kind. See you all next time.